Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning and perhaps even good evening. Thank you so much for dropping by and joining me for an exciting continuation of Sunday session here where I'm fiddling with my Dash Studio Masterclass thumbnail. Thank you so much for the raid. There's nothing quite like starting a Twitch stream, stream, stream off with a little raid. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate that. So I suppose I don't need to give you a shout out just now because everyone's here actually has come in from Chris. So wonderful to see you, Charles and the Sacred Sage and Chris, of course and Miss Darja is here. Wonderful to see you all. And anyone else who's out there watching, thank you so much for dropping by. Let me quickly show you what I'm working on today. This is something we've cobbled up on Sunday in about a three hour session, which is really cool. I really like what we've what we've come up with there. I have made a small adjustment in that I've blended out the bottom part here with uh, with a, with a, with a thing which I can't remember where that was but it was it was somewhere it's instead of just having a selection on the bottom it kind of just blends it out and this now allows me to add text like this on the bottom and this is designed to uh, you know be the thumbnail for the 50 odd videos that I have in the masterclass so I've split them up into groups of 10 so sometimes the first part is going to be blue the second part is going to be something like this something like an orangey yellow like matching these colors you're picking these colors up and then the last part is red and yes 55 videos we have i think 56 actually want to split into two parts so one of those things so yes i do enjoy a bit of photoshop work if it goes well so i'm gonna my plan is to add a few props in here like you know bags on the floor and i think the two guys they should maybe have laptops so that they can get on with you know with that and maybe we have something like a skeleton standing here or maybe here something you know just just bits and pieces that make the scene a little bit more interesting i think i've zoomed in a little bit more i think if i yeah that was this was the original and if i go if i just go and make a duplicate at that and shrink it back to its original size hello photoshop what you help me out here i think it was like this so i just zoomed in a little and just got rid of the clock so i think that that was uh, i think the, the the new framing works a little bit better and it focuses in more on the actual message and also gets rid of the window and the plant there so sometimes it's those little things that i like to make in in post-production those little um those little things, um, adjustments. And so these two guys, they're animated. Once we're done with putting all the bits and pieces in, I'd like to just have a small camera pan over maybe th two, 300 frames that just moves in and, uh, and focuses on this. So we'll see how we do that. But before we get started, first of all, a little bit of music and then a quick thing I wanted to record for one of my supporters, the Kiwi Hawk. I think he had a question about how to export We hear it. Good stuff. How to export a Genesis figure without hands and feet. So that is how we're going to get started. Is that loud enough? It, it is. It is for me. But if the background music is too quiet for you, please let me know. Okay, so Kiwi, this one is for you. I believe your question was, and I don't know if I got you there correctly, you wanted to export a Genesis figure without the arms, sorry, without the feet and the hands. And there is a way to do this with Das Studio, and you may just need to, you know, I just, I'm just going to show you how to do it. I'm going to load in my dev load character here, Genesis. Genesis 8. It'll work, of course, with 8.1 as well as the male figures, as well as custom characters. No problem at all, uh, as long as, you know, you just use the A pose. I suppose that is important uh, for whatever it is that you want to do. That is not something I'm privy to, but I'm sure you have a few reasons. So first of all, we're going to whip out our geometry editor. Actually, first of all, I'm going to make my cursor a little bit more visible here. <laughs> Very important. Like, ding, there we go. So um, first of all, I'm going to go and select the pieces that you don't want to export, like the hands as well as the fingernails and also the feet as well as the toenails. And we can do that with the geometry editor. So with the tool selected and the tools, geometry editor or this tiny little icon here, head over to the tool settings so that you can expose most of these face groups that we already have here. So sadly, this doesn't have something to search through, but since these groups are already defined, you don't have to manually select them here. So what I would go for is look through and see if you find something like the uh, like the hand, maybe even not even as face groups. You can probably do that under um, under either regions or surfaces. So you might find that 
hands are defined. No, they're not defined as surfaces. They will be defined as face groups, but it's difficult to find them from here. So have a look for regions and then you should find hands. So then you have this plus icon here. That'll do this. So you see hands are now here, but the fingernails are not selected or the fingertips. So with that selection made, you can right click here and then head over to geometry something, geometry editing, that's it. And then you say delete selected polygons. And that now goes and gets rid of these things in a second. And that then removes the hands. So you have to do the same thing with the fingertips here. And wait a while, hoping that that studio doesn't crash while you do that. <laughs> it's usually a matter of, you know, seconds rather than minutes. So I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> Maybe we're doing something wrong here. You can do it bit by bit or you can make multiple selections and then remove the polygons. It could be that DAS Studio has problems because it leaves some polygons in place. So it could be that that was my mistake. <laughs> That's not good. The demonstration effect. Oh, there we go. Perfect. That's it. So now we have these things here. I don't know if you can if if you can find them here from the list. You can also go and just um, uh, just go and paint them over, or you can go and use the selection mode and use the marquee or lasso selection. I just select all of these things, the leftover bits here, and then go and remove those. So geometry selection, no, was it editing? Delete selected polygons. You may have to do it on the other side as well, but that's essentially the process. You do the same for the feet. And once you're done, you just export the figure out as an OBJ. There we go. That's not going to do that on the other side as well. Unless you find it in the groups. That's also one of those things like so. Uh, geometry editing, delete selected polygons. And then hang in there and wait and hope it works there perfect so i'll do you uh, i trust you know how to do it with the feet and once you're done you just head over to file export as obj wave on obj and then and then that's it i hope that helps and do let me know what you're doing with it because that's that's kind of you know it's an interesting interesting concept i don't know what 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 happens with the finger and headless footless figure afterwards just 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 curious okay i'm gonna go and bring in my scene from sunday which is this one here masterclass v4 and then we'll see what other props we can provide here i'm thinking of using the props from the two science class bundles there or from the from the actual from science classroom bundle and that came with two expansion pieces that were just loose props but we have to place them separately there's no preload in there we found that out so i'm sure kiwi is up to no good yes i totally agree kiwi always has these these interesting things that he makes and then he sends us thumbnails with the figure and an a pose and <laughs> it's very cool it's you know he does know so much about um about unreal engine i think he's a real resource in that regard Chris, while I have you, um, would you be interested in doing another co stream this weekend on Saturday? If you're up for it, do let me know. I was thinking we can talk about Substance Painter and how to put something like take something from Das Studio and put it into Substance Painter, apply materials and bring it back. Do let me know if you're up for that. Be kind of good to do that. Oh, how exciting! I'll contact you later. We can maybe hammer out a little, a little plan there. That'd be good to. Um, Good to do that again i really enjoyed our stream about deforce that was really really nice our still camera goes here and then i'll go and open up another viewport here top and bottom and then eventually once that studio responds again <laughs> we'll go down here and also maybe use or use perspective view and also use filament here perfect okay so i'm thinking Maybe laptops. I don't know if I have laptops in my 
in my library here. I might make the cameras invisible as well so that they're not lurking around. I might also make the filament draw options node a little less strong here. There, so that the viewport doesn't quite burn out all that much. So laptops, let's see. So I'd go and uh, have a look for all my files. And I don't have laptops, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. Why don't I have laptops? Computer. Anything like that. No. Nothing. Dang. That's uncool. I'm sure I have them. I might just not have them in in anywhere in anywhere installed. All products. Anything. There we go. Laptop and table set. I knew I had that. Laptop poses for Genesis 3. That is that's all we need. <laughs> Double click that and install it. <laughs> Right, is he? Yes, that could well be Dodger. Do you know, Chris, why don't we both do that? Let's both get it and see if that is something we can explore. Why don't we do that? Um, I will get it as well and we'll we'll both have a look at it. Why don't we do that? And maybe it comes in handy. If not, that's also fine. Uh, but if it does, you know, that's another way of showing it. I'm thinking maybe it's a good idea to show the manual workflow. And then once we figure out the plugin is of use, we can maybe then uh, show how to, how to, if we work out how to do it by then, we can then show how that works. That might be, that might be a nice idea. Yes, I'm thinking like, you know, be the master of your own materials. That'd be kind of kind of cool to to have something uh, like that. And I have to say that after we um, after we did the, the default stream, that really helped me understand uh, how you do it and how, how it's, you know, how it's done in principle. And it's wonderful to have this kind of a um, focused video on that. So the Predatron. Laptop zero position, laptop on the table. Yeah, let's do this one here. That, alt, left click and drag, kind of under the table. It sounds bizarre, but that is what we need to do in order for it to remain roughly in the position that we want it to have it in. There we go, that's that's one of them. And I might just go and duplicate that. Duplicate nodes, and we have laptop number two. Laptop number two goes over here on AJ Sable. We'll worry about the rotation in a second. So I'll call this one Claire's laptop. Claire's laptop, and this one is AJ's laptop. I had the idea to turn these guys from Mixamo into Genesis figures. I mean, it's one of those things that uh, I wouldn't be able to sell them, and that's not really the the point. It would just be nice to to be able to um, to. Uh, he's actually larger than her, isn't he? Oh, that's not good. She's a she's a little he's a little too large. I'm thinking. <laughs> Let's make him a bit smaller while we're here. Yeah, now that I see these guys side by side, I was just thinking it might be kind of nice to have him as a Genesis 8 figure, and I can do that with wrap. So let's see how that works. <laughs> and I agree that Studio still has really good, um, uh, very good, um, what's it called? Very good renders on the output. That's very true. Very true. As does Blender. So I think the. the as, as well as real time is doing, I think, I think anything that takes longer for renders is usually better in, in its quality. There, so I'll make this a little, make him a little, little smaller like so. I think that would be, yeah, I, I like that a bit better. It's funny what you don't notice when you work sometimes so many things that you do notice and other things that you're completely un oblivious to so he doesn't quite reach the uh, reach the floor neither does she but that's also cool i might actually make her a little little bigger as well just a tiny bit now that i think about it is she too big now she's maybe a little bit too too big there be, be the petite lady that I that I had envisioned on Sunday. Uh, a tiny bit. Tiny bit. There we go. Okay, fine. <laughs> Your laptops is what this is all about. So laptop. Can we open it up as well? Oh no, that's the that's that note. So let's go and put that here. Doesn't have to be super straight. 
and there has to be room for a coffee cup as well that's important since i don't know how the laptop works oh look he's rigged it predatron he's rigged it yes <laughs> that is very good look at that rigged laptop forget morphs it's proper rigged stuff and all that i wonder do we have materials for the screen i'd love it if we could just put the das studio interface on that screen that would be cool wouldn't it do we have materials here yes there we go in iray so we have the blue screen of death that might be that might be seriously funny put that on there <laughs> yes because you know we all have that from time to time what else do we have i love it so i might replace this with the with the dash studio interface because that would just be fun <laughs> also welcome also not bad or oh, there's a computer game on there that might look like a 3d thing so we'll see we'll work it out I, I like it already that is very very nice in regards to size um i mean she might have the 15 inch one and he might have the 17 inch one we'll we'll see about that ages laptop Predatron has rigged the laptop. That is very good. Whoops, that's the wrong way around. Hiya! Like so? Yes. I like it. Also, maybe put that over here. Or maybe he doesn't have coffee. Maybe she has coffee. So we'll give her a coffee cup in a second. I think maybe one of them should have maybe Blender or Marvelous Designer or something. And the other person could have could have uh, could have a Das Studio screenshot. That'd be kind of cool. Madness, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Wonderful uh, afternoon slash evening. Evening it is for you, I think. Oh, you think? I think she's just very eager to get started with the whole um, with the whole with the whole thing. I'm thinking. That was my impression, but you know, it could could well be wrong. Here look, I'm thinking AJ probably has the blue screen of death on his on his laptop. Whereas for her it's kind of working alright, so I that's that might be that might be nice. Um okay, we'll do that. And coffee cup for Claire's desk. Let's see if we can make that happen. Coffee cup. So I think there's enough stuff on AJ's desk. We just need a couple of bags on the bottom here. And I think a coffee cup for Claire. Okay, let's see if we can find that. I'll see. There's something like is there nothing is there nothing in here? That's I always find that so depressing. I should have at least a, a cup. It's kind of a cup with pens. That's not the cup I mean. That's not the cup I mean. Science classroom, we're looking at that in a second. Unless, of course, there is a coffee cup in there. I, I doubt it. Cleaning supplies, there's pots and pans, juice cartons. That is nice. Could have a juice carton. Metal tray. Rubik's cube, that'll, that'll help. <laughs> Cellar tape dispenser, yeah, no, no, that's, that's not what we're looking for. A banana is good because that's, you know, power food. I'm sure we're going to find... Don't I have something like a diner? There's a diner. That's a normal coffee cup. I mean like a... Like a... Like a cup. No, that's that's just a cup. What else would I call it? Tumbler, maybe? Tumbler? I also don't have that. Dang! Okay, just look through the whole library and see what we find. Skull, not so bad. Hey, if all if if I can't find one, I'll just model one. Well, there's a whole syrup thing here. That might be that might be too much. 
could even be from a product that I haven't got installed. I can shake. That would work. Maybe she has a power shake instead. That'd be good. <laughs> but I'm looking for something like the Starbucks cup, like the classic thing that goes out and has a lid and stuff. I'm sure I have that. It's just, you know, when you want it, when you're looking for it, like this one here, the going to work coffee zero. So if I'm searching for coffee, why does it not bring that up then? Just out of curiosity, if I go and left click and drag that just here so that it's in the vicinity. If I go, so this is the going to work coffee zero. So if I look for coffee, why does that not come? It, and now it comes up. Oh, is that so? Because a minute ago when I said all files, oh, now it works. Right. It just didn't work when I tried it the first time. Yes. Hey, no worries. I know what it's like. It's difficult to be a computer. <laughs> Let's do that again. So going to work coffee. Alt, left click and drag it out to kind of here. And that it was the material. So that's not probably doesn't work <laughs> there. That's where we want him. Because she's just got herself a half calf sprinkled latte with extra hazelnut syrup and all that. And the cup is, of course, also facing her. Oops. <laughs> uh, that's not what I meant. Like so. Safety first. Don't have that next to, next to your laptop. Also your laptop might need to come forward a little bit because of course you're interested and excited about what's happening on the screen which might not be a computer game we'll work that out a little bit later so i'm thinking they need bags here something like school bags that can that can be put here so that might actually be inside my my science class bundles classroom props let's see might be in there Well, there's certainly an exercise book and a stack of books. Pencil sharpener. Not what we're looking for. Maybe in the science classroom props. Yeah, just a trash can and a volcano. <laughs> Not what we're looking for either. Maybe then the... Maybe I'll just find a bag. See if it works now. If I go bag. JNC bag, lunch bag. Bunny dreams bag for the arm. Hmm. Might be. That might work. Is that a good bag? Only if we can do something about the strap. So that would have to fold down completely. But it's also not, not the kind of bag I was looking for, really. Unless it could hang over her, over her seat, that is possible. It's... Let's try that. If not, I can always, I mean, there's, you know, there's plenty of other things we can, we can try. But maybe you can just hang here. Perfect. So the only thing that we need in this bag is something that that just bends this over a little bit, like you know, like so. So that's that's fairly easy to do as a morph. So okay. So the bunny dreams bag might might be something. I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> What's the JNC bag? JNC bag. Let's put that down here. See what that's like. That is, oh yeah, look, that's that's something I'm looking for. This is great for AJ's bag. That's fantastic. This is something I need. Uh, 
there. So AJ's laptop and stuff I might even make that a bit bigger because you know he's got the he's got his gamepad in there as well as well as his lunch. So yeah, perfect. We don't actually see that if it's here. So I might actually just take that bag out and just put that um, here and have the strap kind of dangle down. That's something else I can try out. Yes, it's actually essential. You, in one, you always have a look at your camera and then in the other one, you place objects around. Some people do it with four. So if you have a really large monitor and a very performant computer, you can have a look at your scene in four viewports. You often see that in uh, when, when real modelers do it. So they have one perspective view and then they always have like the, uh, the top and the right view or the top and the side view and then usually something something else for detail work so that when you when you make a brush stroke or when you do some modeling like if you uh, if you extrude something up you want to have a look at is it actually going the right way and you can do that at the same time yeah really large monitors and highly performant computers are are really good for that you can also here in dash studio you can have another tab that you can put here which is the aux viewport that is that's also nice to use that that's um partly something you can use for uh, for rendering the 3D light in live. But if you put this at the top of your scene tab, for example, you always have one thing that is, you can have this in full view, and then this would be the, the aux viewport. So you can just go and stack that up if you wanna, if you wanna do that. So that's also fairly handy. <laughs> yes, you do, don't you? <laughs> you learn something new every day, I totally agree. So then in here, in if we look at the the framing, if it was here, we we barely we barely see it. So I think I might go and take this out and just put it on the bottom. I just make sure that the that the handle here, that the strap is kind of dangling on the on the floor. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. And then that's the bags taken care of. And then we'll see what else, what other paraphernalia we can find. I'll save this as Masterclass Five. And then I'll see if that's, is that something we should do in Blender? Is that something we should do in ZBrush? Or is that something we should do in Hexagon? Answers on a postcard, I don't really know. So if I'm thinking of this bag here and just take this strap and just make sure it kind of lies on the floor, a bit like this here. All these applications have that going for them. I might just go and and do that in in Blender. Let's try that. Let's try it. I don't know if it's going to be successful or not, but let's try it. I'll open a new instance of Dash Studio so I can just leave that scene as it is. Second instance can then just use uh, export that in its zero position and import the morph. That's the plan. <laughs> Charles is going to lurk. That's cool. Charles, I was going to rewatch your stream and it turns out you haven't recorded it. I mean, you you didn't tell Twitch to keep the streams. That's one of those things that's conveniently, convenient feature disabled by default. I don't know why they do it. Everyone wants to keep their streams, you know, let's just disable it. If you let people disable it, if they really want to do it. But yeah, there is a setting in there that that says keep your keep your VODs, something like that. See if you can find it. And then next time when you stream, it'll be there for two weeks and then eventually it'll expire. And then uh, when you're an affiliate or an Amazon Prime member and have linked your Amazon Prime account with Twitch or you're a Twitch Turbo member, you will get two months worth of VOD storage instead of two weeks, which is the default. All products, bag, come on. It's the same as, as before, isn't it? I'm searching for it and it's not here. <laughs> Why? Oh, it's because it's files, isn't it? <laughs> yes, bag. There, this Bunny Dreams bag arm. Perfect. And that is here. So that is... Uh, well, no worries. I'm going to go and make it happen. <laughs> With this, I'm going to go and export that into... I think I have that in my Dropbox, haven't I? It's probably about time I go and, and map this as a 
has a folder here on the on the side there. I think like uh, Kemi suggested, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go use like uh, pin to what's it called here? This here, pin to pin to whatever quick access. That's the one. Perfect. And then I can go and navigate that a little bit quicker. I might go and make a new folder in here and I'll call it OBJs. And this is going to be the bunny bag zero. And I'll use the DAS preset exported at 10,000. No, sorry, at 1%. And I'm going to. I'm going to not use surfaces. There we go. Just just uh, surfaces, but no uh, no maps there. Boom. And that. Let's see if we can do that in Blender. Yes, indeed. You're a Prime member. Oh, that's good to know. So then you have two months of video storage for free. That's cool. So Twitch works in the way, it works slightly differently to YouTube. When you put something on YouTube, it'll be there forever unless you delete it. And on Twitch, it kind of, your whatever you stream auto expires but if ever you don't want that to happen if there's something you think hey that was a really good stream and i don't want that to go even after two months you can turn it into a highlight and just um, top and tail the whole thing just make sure it's uh, at the very beginning and at the very end and when you turn it into a highlight it'll the vod will expire but the highlight will not so that's that's also a nice uh, nice thing you can you can do on twitch or the other thing is you can send it over to YouTube. There's an integration. If you hook up YouTube with your Twitch account, you can go and send a VOD or a highlight over to YouTube. And then it just it stays there and you can make it public or keep it private. That's, that's also a nice idea. I do that with some of my working sessions. Sometimes it's not all that important um, for... For stuff, so, so I treat this like when when I do something on Twitch, it's nice to keep it there for two months. If it disappears, it disappears. That's good. But some of the things um, I feel like they're worth sharing with you know with with future generations, so to speak. And then I either send it to YouTube or I turn it into a shorter clip and and share that on YouTube. Geometry don't split. The polygroups is uh, probably a good idea. Keep that and. Bunny bag. All right. Our challenge is in edit mode to. Oh, that's dense geometry, isn't it? Was that in base res? I didn't actually look. It might be high res. Let's see. Yes, it is high res. Okay. Let's go switch it to base res and export it again. I didn't see was that that high resolution. Okay. Bunny bag. Do that again. Sorry, bunny bag. <laughs> um, good question, Charles. That is a good question. Uh, I don't actually know. <laughs> Good question. You can, um, does it give you a free subscription every month? If you see that, like if you were tr to try to subscribe to either Chris's channel or my channel, does it give you the option to use a Prime sub? If so, then you link properly. Yeah, I'm not sure how you find out. <laughs> it's a good question. That there should be an option. <laughs> I can't remember how to do it. Okay, so let's see if we can... Uh, I might go and bring myself... I don't want to uh, change the zero position of the bag necessarily. Even though actually I, I do, don't I? <laughs> I? Actually, I do. I want for this to... This can be part of the morph. I'm happy about that. It, it, I would like for this to be on the floor here. There. So that's, that's my guideline. And that was in object mode so i'll say control a and do that i don't actually mind it being in the in the actual zero position there so even better perfect 
So with that, can I go and... Yes, that works. That's perfect. So now, oh, there's another problem, isn't there? Because now I might, I might be able to, might be able to swing it here. If I don't say global, if I say normal, nah, I see that doesn't work either. Could it be a local? Yeah, local. Nah, isn't, nah that's not going to work either. So it's more about um, putting this flat. So let me go and do to get come out of here and just have a look at the rotation of the thing and just make it kind of like this that should that should work okay and then I'd like for it to rotate around this bottom part here oops <laughs> I might try to select these two these two rings here is that possible yes that and that perfect and this is essentially the position that i'd like my 3d cursor to have so i wish i knew how to do this from the menu but i think i'll search i'll say cursor to select it like so ding under snap that's where that is good stuff so now I'm going to try to select all this and then I'll say this here, use the 3D cursor. And that in global. Yes, that certainly works. That is very good. It doesn't work perfectly, but it certainly works enough. Oh, come on. <laughs> Enough for me to make that happen. And then I'll just go and drag this up a little. It's actually fairly, fairly good here. I just don't want it to slip off the ring. Very goody. And then all I'm going to do is have this kind of bent down with a little proportional editing and then we should be should be good it is now okay good good stuff so um oft also the other thing that you get is like chris has that he has this little crown next to his name and that means he is a prime subscriber so there's a there's a way that you can I think change your flair. I think that's how what, what Twitch calls it. And you can choose to display that you're a Prime subscriber. So like Chris does that. I think do I am I a Prime subscriber? Am I Prime? I wonder is it is it showing? No, mine is showing the turbo side. So I have the camera icon, which means I'm the broadcaster, and then I have the star icon, which is the, the fact that I'm a subscriber to my own channel, I guess. And then the little battery sign that is uh, the fact that I'm a Twitch Turbo subscriber. But I can change that out into the little crown that Chris has, and then it would show that I'm a I'm a Prime customer subscriber. But that's good because that gives you not only does that give you the the um, more like longer storage space it also gives you uh the the free sub a month which is really nice so it's a good good thing to have i might just go and wiggle this out a tiny bit here i wasn't quite on the on this ring not that anyone's going to notice but yeah actually maybe i i did that i did that a little wrong here i might have to use proportional editing for that as well okay let's do that Maybe with, are we going to do this with face selection? Yeah, let's do that. Facial selection to about kind of here. Oh, face selection, I said. Like these four, that'll be good. And then we use proportional editing. And that is, of course, way too much. That's that is that is that better? That's not actually at the point that we want it. So that here needs to be 
a bounding box center now and then I'll say this is normal now and then I'll say I can do that this way and that then that then does that that's also not what we want <laughs> we're getting there connected only <laughs> and then we do then we do that yes then we do that perfect fantastic <laughs> we're, we're getting there This is, of course, spending way too much time <laughs> on something that really isn't isn't all that necessary. But I find it uh, quite funky to to do these things as little exercises. Because regardless of is it is it important for this or not, it might be important uh, at another time to be able to do this and. Why not do it while we're all here together? I might go and just select these guys here. That should be enough. Those things, I don't actually know what they are. I, th I have a feeling they're probably supposed to be in here. I'm going to have a look at the original object. I don't know why they're, why they're up there. Oh, they're supposed to marry up that strap. So that's where they're supposed to be. Okay, we can correct that. Good. Glad, I, glad I checked. <laughs> glad I checked the buttons. I'll unselect, deselect, shift L that. Oh, hello. Shit, don't want to do that? You're not linked? There we go, perfect. And then we just go and put these guys down. Oops. That's probably better as global here. And they're supposed to be in the middle of that strap here. Or at the kind of at the bottom there. It looks like the back face is okay, but the front one we just need to have a little word with here. Oh, that's probably not good as global, so we need to do normal on this. But that was also not perfect. Local then. Also not good. Gotcha. Hey, that's annoying, isn't it? There. Probably good enough. Same on the other side. I might as well do these things independently. Oops.
Locals not good. Normal isn't good. How about gimbal? Is gimbal good? Okay, well, there's also camera I can use. And then I like view here. That's the one. They'll always stay aligned to the view. And then I can just go and line something like this up. And then I think GX will do that. Yeah, that'll, that'll also work. So I'll use the, use the view to make that eyeballing adjustment. probably enough like this and the other part of the thing is here l to link all of these pieces uh, i don't think view is is my view isn't for me Oop, that was too much that just button at the back i think that might that might actually we're nearly there. <laughs> really going to town on this little bag here. And it looking absolutely super mighty fine. <laughs> like so. Come on. Perfection. Oh no, not 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 quite. Is it good enough, I'm thinking. Zesky88, thank you so much for following. I appreciate that. <laughs> Very nice. Or maybe it needs to be on the kind of opposite here. I mean, not that anyone's ever going to notice this, but I'll know. I'll know. Claire's going to know. And yeah, that's going to be good enough. Well, is it? Is it? Is it really? It's. Uh, I feel like this. This should be so much easier. <laughs> if only I could do it, huh? Headpink has subscribed with Prime. That is very nice of you. That is what I was talking about earlier. The free Prime subscription. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. So the only thing I'd like to do now is I'd like to suggest that the strap is a little wobbly and I'm going to make it kind of bend down so that it rests on the floor. It doesn't have to be anything super dramatic in which this uh, gets turned flat, even though I suppose I could do that. I'm just thinking I'll just suggest a little a little bend here as if it kind of just falls down from here. That's the that's what I'm that's what I'm trying. Maybe with. Maybe just selecting these faces here and then with with a little bit of proportional editing. Let's see what how it's whoops, let's switch it off, haven't I? <laughs> if I switch it on again, then that happens. So yeah, it needs to be a little larger here. Area of influence, like something like that. And we'll say G and X. Uh it needs still needs to be larger, like so. Like so, G, Z, so it kind of falls down. G, X, so just goes something like that. There, nothing dramatic, but something that just suggests a little bit of movement on there. And I think that is probably our bag done now. I think. <laughs> he says. And it'll just stand there like this underneath um, Claire's table. That's the idea. <laughs> Sub hype indeed, Chris. I'm going to go and treat myself to another cup of coffee, actually, before we bring this back into the studio and then hopefully underneath the table. There we go. I really appreciate all your support and all the little follows and subscriptions. And of course, your company while I undertake a difficult thing like this. Well, for me, this is very difficult. For a seasoned modeler, this would all be really, really easy, but... I'm going to call this one the bunny bag. Just as a blend file. And I'll go and save it out as an OBJ. This is always the moment of truth here. Is it going to work? Uh, 
I'll just call this one bag. Or just stra yeah, bag, strap, bend. That should do the trick. And 100%. <laughs> Demar official, thank you so much for following. I appreciate that. Very nice, very nice of you. <laughs> Sub hype indeed. Sub hype follow up. Let's get on the hype train. So 100% scale, well not 100%, it's 100 times larger than than this float value of one. We need to keep the vertex order and I want to have the selected objects only. And that should do the trick. Let's see what Das Studio thinks about it. This one here. So what I'm expecting this to do is to drop the whole bag onto the floor and also bend the strap. <laughs> Will it do that though? <laughs> Let's see. So object more floater pro choose back strap bent and the one important bit here is that we need to say reverse deformations and everything else is actually okay isn't it yes let's let's let it be okay that was successful <gasps> Fingers crossed, everyone. And does it do it? Yes! Yes! It does! Oh! Fantastic! That was its original position with, uh, with the origin point up here. And this is my new position. And I think I might go and change the origin point as well, because that shouldn't be up there. It should be more, you know, where my thing actually is. So let's do that. Front view. Little joint editor tool. And that might be really difficult to see, but you need to grab the, whoops. <laughs> you need to grab the green guy. If you can't see it, just move the red guy. That's cool. You can move the move the red thing as well. But the green guy is the one that needs to be in the ground position. And this will move because of where, because of where I've just moved the red guy. So <laughs> let's try that again. Oh, come on. Don't be difficult. He doesn't want to go. Yeah, this it doesn't really matter where where that is. It's a shame that it's moved now. <laughs> Not what I want. <laughs> Not what I want. It's kind of almost in the right position. <laughs> Maybe I can just go and... Yeah, I can't even force it. What a shame. That is a shame. So the object in, in Blender, I'd have the option to uh, to just go and uh, define an origin point, but because I'm not doing that, I'm importing it as a morph. This is really, this is really weird. I wish there was a way, that like an easier way to do this in, uh, in Das Studio, but alas, I don't think there is. And maybe there is, I don't know it. That is also, that's also possible. So like these things here, they should really be zero. But when I do that, then of course the um, the origin point is not where we wanted it to be. So maybe I'll go and change my mind about the origin point <laughs> and just leave it where it is. I'll, I might do that. I might do that. And how many undo steps do I have? Maybe just putting it down. Oops. So it's a little closer. It's not perfect, but you know, I'll, I'll know what to do with it. <laughs> I'll know what to do with it. <laughs> okay, so with that, I'm going to go and put this into... I'm going to save this as a, uh, as a sub-scene, so I can just go and import this into the master scene. And since this is my second instance of Das Studio, I'm just going to go and put this here as a new directory. scenes here so that's gonna be my bunny back with the strap on the correct size here bunny bag scene subset and that means now in my whoop that's not it it is here haha 
here. We'll go and refresh this and then this is where the bunny bag comes in handy. So let's go and put that kind of down here. Alt, left click and drag to put it into the correct position and, and here we go. Even though it's not quite perfect with the origin point here, I can, I can live with it. I can live with it. So let's be here. Maybe it'll be a bit, whoops, the larger is also bad because of the position of the origin point. I will just put that down so that we see it down here somewhere. If ever we do. We barely see it, what a shame. Claire, you're back. I'd like your back for, I'd like for your back to be more in, in vision here. That'll work. Yeah, I wish it could be bigger. Oh, that's a little bit too big. Okay, that's neat. Maybe turn it around a little bit. Wonky origin point doesn't make that easy, but... There, the stuff here now. That's, that's all I wanted, really. That's all I wanted. So, what else do we might need in the scene? I mean, considering I've already zoomed in a little bit uh, in post-production, so I'm not going to do that with the camera here. So we take the, we take the clocks off. I could try to correct the framing, but I think I'd rather do that in, in post-production. Unless, should I? Stills cam, I might just duplicate that and try and do it in here. So duplicate the stills cam, stills cam 2. So I think the framing I had was something like, like this. Just frame those things up, but yeah, I don't think it was actually. I don't think I don't think that works so well. I think I'll do that in post production. Yeah, I think I'll do that in post production. I could try this. Yeah, that might be that might be nice just to show the the hard work on the back. So let's do that. But um, so I think in the science classroom there were things like the like the skeleton. I don't know where that would fit in though. It would be nice to have that in here somewhere, but it might just be it might just be too much. I'm thinking perhaps some wall decorations here or there that might that might work. Like we had the clocks. There were other things that might that might come in handy. Those are books here. Coffee machine. There's also furniture, I believe. That could be something that goes underneath here, something like that. We could try to put the skeleton like here. I'll see if I can find him. Gown hook. Recycling box, that's always good. Wall art, like this is this is what I'm thinking. Wall art might be nice. Like that could go um that could go here. Alt left click and drag that into here. And then we have a bit of wall art. It might not be rotated properly. The 1993 calendar. Yeah, that is, that is nice. Oh, that might also be a little bit too big as wall art. I might have to go and slim it down some. I could do that in the and with the geometry editor, that's nice if we just have the calendar here. 
or just cheat and do something like this. It'd be ideal if we had both, but I think maybe just the calendar is probably enough. I mean, that's easy. We don't have to worry about the, the stuff that's behind the wall. <laughs> Let's just make it a calendar here. Even a little larger. I'm good with that. There, just so that we have something else here. And I'm thinking something similar here and maybe down here as well, just to fill those, those things out. Uh, I think I just see something else moving there. I should be behind the boss. We can... Or should we just use this? That's actually nice instead of the calendar. Let me do that and I'll just remove these these polygons. Um, that'll work. Yeah, let's just use upcoming programs and remove these things here. So that works with the geometry editor. We can hide those things with the selection set or we can remove them altogether. It doesn't really matter. Let's go with like what, what I've described earlier. It's, it's relatively easy to do that. So select that. And I might just I might just try removing it altogether. Editing, delete, selected polygons. Perfect. And now this remains. Science classroom comes back. Wall art. goes here. Cool. Okay. Something else here. Oh, also save. Always a good idea <laughs> while we're at it. Now oh, we didn't change that much. So we can just go over save that. Neat. The sacred sage is back. What have you what have you accomplished in Unreal Engine? Tell me, tell me. Share the knowledge. It is such a great program, isn't it? There's just so much you can do. It's like the sky's the limit. Just because of the, all the, the logic and stuff that goes in there. Getting materials for genitals to Unreal Engine. The most important thing that you need to do in 3D, of course. I understand. Very good. I'm glad you got that sorted. What else can we have here? That's wall art. Oh, this is a ton of wall art here. Tons of wall art. Way scale. Four, four types of wall art. Okay, let's, let's have a look. <laughs> And do you know, I heard that. I heard that. It's a really difficult thing. I'm glad you made it happen. Actually, speaking of that, we could just maybe put these two items if they are... Are they separate? That, that Yes. So I could just go and put those over here. Then I don't have to worry about adding other things in there. I'll just put this... Do we even see it? We might in the animation. I might just put that over here and this same thing. Where's the manipulator for that? Do we have that anywhere? Oh, it's here. Well, that's just part of the wall. Okay. In which case I might not, I might not worry about this. This, this is wall really? That can't be. I'm sure that's wall art. Unless it's part of the wall shader, that's possible. This is that surface shader. Part of the surface, this. Fire safety thing. Yeah, that's just part of the wall shader. Okay, got you. Well, may, I might just leave that then and we'll see if we can find something like a cupboard here in the middle. 
Or is that going to make it a bit too cluttered? I can't tell. Maybe we're okay this way. Maybe I'm okay this way and I'll, I'll go and start uh, working on the animation now. Maybe that's that's the way to go. <laughs> that is the way to go. Yes, that's the way to go. Complete freedom! How you doing? Welcome, I understand you're a viewer of Chris's. I've seen you there in chat every once in a while. Never said hello. Hey, good to see you. Also, Red Zizo has subscribed on YouTube. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate that, buddy. Enjoy the channel. Yes, let's do that. Let's do a little bit of animation then. And we've just saved everything. Let's go and save this one more time. And see how how long this would be if it's uh, like a 300 frame animation at 30 frames a second. It's about 10 seconds. That's probably long enough. It might even be a bit too long, but I can always tweak that in post-production. If I do render that out, we've got 200... 86 frames at 30 frames a second. That is, that's not bad. So this is my stills camera. I've got one that is my my main camera and that starts here. So I might disregard that and just duplicate my main camera and use that as the final keyframe. And then I'll just move back from there. I'll just you know adjust that. So that's kind of a median thing. Let me do that to so main camera goes away. My stills camera is going to be duplicated. Stills camera, edit, duplicate. And I'll call this one maybe film camera because that's the one that that film stuff, you know. <laughs> and just so while we're on frame one, I'll say this is kind of where I want to end up. Maybe even, maybe even here. Is that what we want to do? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I don't want to ruin anything. Let me take the ceiling off here and then I can have a look from the top view here and then just direct the camera from there to hop. Yeah, I suppose then when I'm back here, I can probably do this with focal length, can't I? And then just correct the height from here. I like that. Let's do that. So it's just this and then the rest is going to be done with focal length as soon as we get kind of here to frame 200. I think that might be nice. And then so at this point I'm going to go and put this to 28 again just so that we have a keyframe here at that point. And then towards the end we're just going to have this at whatever it needs to be to fill that out. Let's 50. 50 is good. 50, maybe we'll go 60 to treat ourselves. And then there's just the height adjustment then.
um, parameters, rotation, Y rotation. And then also uh, Y translate. How does that look? Not bad, but we do go up here, so that needs to be corrected. And that's just a matter of setting an additional keyframe. Under, where is my film camera then? Where is it? I don't find it. Got the stills camera, where's the film camera? Oh, maybe select it in the viewport. I don't see it. Where is it? Is it in a group somewhere? No, it's by itself. Can you see it? I can't see it. I can see all the other bits and pieces. I do not see. I've got a stills camera here, but I do not see my film camera. How peculiar. Why is that? Without that, I can't see keyframes. It's not there, is it? <laughs> well, that is odd. Is it because I've made a duplicate of it? It's not here. Huh. Maybe if I go and save the scene and then bring it back. Because that I want to correct. I just want to add that additional keyframe so that where we pull the focus or the, the, um, the, the um, focal length, I just want to keep that keyframe there. That's, that's bizarre. That is bizarre. Let me go save this as as number six, and then we'll just go and quickly restart that studio. Maybe that'll that'll do the trick. That is weird. Duplicate a camera and then it doesn't appear in the timeline? Hmm. Uncool. Could just be a little issue there. I might also close this down now that we've fixed that. Or I could try to load it into this version of Dash Studio. That's also a possibility. See how that timeline does with it. And if that also doesn't work, well, then I'm going to have to go and create a new camera and recreate that motion somehow. That's also possible. I could use the, the, the pose from the stills camera and save it and apply it to the other cameras. That's possible, but yeah, I'd rather not, <laughs> as you can imagine. Always something new, isn't there? Always something new. So we've got the film camera here. We've got things in our timeline. What I see is Claire's leg. Yeah, there we go. There's the film camera there. Ha! Good stuff. So uh, interesting, interesting bug that. Very interesting bug. So this is the magic keyframe uh, 200 that we need to be on. And it's the Y transform that we want to keep. So under transform, Y transform, there just needs to be a keyframe at this point. And I don't remember what the previous value was. 112, let's say 112. Yeah, let's say 112. There. And then add frame 200. 
we want for that to be 112 as well. There. So that we have this. Well, that's also weird. What's that? That's the rotational values that need to also be locked in. And then we do that. Perfect. So rotation. Let's talk about rotation here. Rotation is 177, let's say, as well as 65, as well as minus 180, let's say. And that needs to remain the same until here, and only then can it change. So 177, 65, and minus 179. So we add that's actually correct here. It's just that those... Those who, oh, I see, yes, right, so those are, right, so it's not actually that there is movement, there is, I mean, there is, but the reason for that is the interpolation. So I think if we were to switch over to the graph editor, then we'll see that this would be better. If we make this, not those, just those. Actually, with with rotation, all of these things, it's fine. <laughs> just go, just go all out. All of these things, perfect. Let's make those linear. There, and then that wobble interpolation is is gone. Still see that perspective shift there. That might be because of the focal length. Focal length, yeah, that needs to also be linear. Linear. All right, how does that work? That is much better. So we just have slight movement, and then we have the. Jeez. It's a little, it's a little strong now. So maybe that point. Where that happens, I need to go and change it to speed up a little. Yeah, so maybe that was not good. Let's go and bring that back. It might just be one keyframe that needs the linear treatment, because I did like this. That was okay for me. Or I just go in a little later. But this thing, where that changes from here to there, I think where this goes back and then forth again. Uh, that's that's not something I'm I'm all that happy with. Let's have a look on the on the graph editor and see if that can help us help us understand the movements here. Yeah, I think it's this what I'm seeing that the that the curve dips down. So if I go and put that up gradually like so, what's the effect then? It's a, it's kind of a smoother ride. That was it. That was it. I might even speed the last part up in in post. Yeah, but I think that's that's done it. That'll be good. Hold on the last frame. <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good on that. So the only other thing I'd like to change now is that she maybe doesn't have the uh, the game on her laptop. Maybe she just needs to have the like the the Das Studio interface. He can have a you know blue screen of death. That's cool. That just it just happens sometimes. But for her, maybe she needs to have like a Genesis figure or something on her interface. That would be good, even though we barely see it. I know it's there, so. It might be sweet, actually, to to start the zoom in there a little early. So that's just the, the focal length keyframe. So if I go and switch that over to something a little earlier, like so, would that, how would that affect things?
Yeah, I don't want to make it too late, so maybe just in the middle there somewhere, like 170. And then I think I'd like to make one small correction when we do this, that the that by the time we're kind of here, we should maybe be up a little bit more already, like here. Or we just end on something slightly lower. That's also that's also possible. Or maybe we're okay. Or maybe I don't actually mind it. <laughs> also possible. I'm just thinking like this. I might I might just correct this. To that. I thought that might make it a little smoother, but maybe it doesn't. If I oh I know because that is now not uh, not linear, so that also needs to be linear to participate here. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. That's that's perfect. We're good with that. Okay, so just one little screenshot of the DAS interface to put that on her monitor, and then we should be good. Light we're good with, but we will check this in iRay, of course. Yeah, I'm probably okay to end here on frame 280. I don't have to do that. That's it's fine to just you know stay here. But I'll do that in in post production. I can just go and end on a different frame and just make that the end frame. That's that's fine. It's 275. This is a good good end frame there before it goes too far down. Okay, save, 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 save. While it saves, I'll go and open a new instance of uh, DAS Studio and just load the Genesis figure, and then I'll take a screenshot of that interface that goes on on Claire's laptop. I could maybe even go and take a take a screenshot of Blender and put that on AJ's computer. Might also be nice. Any suggestions welcome. So if you find if you have a better idea, do let me know. They take an Unreal Engine screenshot. That's also fine. Are we opening the other instance here, or did I dream? Did I dream that? Yeah, must have dreamt it. It's cool. <laughs> we open the other instance. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Third instance. Perfect, that'd be a good screenshot here with some things expanded here, maybe.
Goody, all right. So um, we do that and we do this. And we'll just save that and just directly as a texture in my in my textures folder here. Hello, Windows. Are you with me? That's to be a screenshot. That's that. And then uh, we we should maybe try the same with with Blender. I just use the, the default cube. That's always nice. That this is gonna be AJ's interface. <laughs> Beautiful. Maybe AJ should have substance paint on it. Same thing, Blender screenshot. And let's see if we can, I don't necessarily want to mess with the UVs in the scene. So I'll just see if I can, if I can adjust the, the surface there. Screen. So this is, oh yeah, this is what it looks like together with some other things on the, on the texture there. So I'll have to be a little inventive with the stretching. <laughs> I like it. So it'll be both offset as well as as well as the tiles. All right, that's AJ's laptop sorted. Claire's laptop. Like so, and then vertical. There, I think the... I might just go and drag the the, whoops, the horizontal, that's what I meant. Horizontal offset to, it doesn't have to all be like this. I'm, I'm happy for it to be like this. And then I'll just do that. There, still very recognizable. Perfect. And you're good here. Yeah, you're good. Good, 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 good. Okay, good. I like it. Yeah, that's that. Let's see what the still looks like and I'll go and render that quickly and then if I'm happy with the light at the beginning, middle and end in iRay then we can call it a day and I can go and uh, render it overnight. But this one here I think I can go and uh, render out because I don't think I've, I've changed much on it and then I can see what that looks like uh, combined with the, uh, with the straps in Photoshop. That'll be cool. And Chris, if you're still watching, I'll be in touch after the stream on uh, Discord to to chat about the weekend. That'll be really that'll be really nice. That would be very very nice. I think last time we had about 500 iterations, so I'll go and have a have a nosy when that happened. <laughs> 
Oh, forgot to bring the ceiling back. That's like... And then, you know, I just realized I didn't pull the focus on the film camera. So that is something we probably want to correct even before we even start thinking about uh, doing a, a, an animation render. <laughs> That'll just be totally out of focus by the time the camera comes to the front. <laughs> the Dare Studio Maester Class. I like it. I like the little screenshots. That's cool. These guys are really into 3D. They can't be playing video games or having error messages. This is going to be good. And then, of course, the tough work of, of this. I mean, it's, you know, it took me half an hour to do that, but I'm actually glad I did it. And it's, it's one of those things where you barely see it, especially in the animation. But now that you know it's there, it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm glad I did it. That is totally cool. What is for dinner, Chris? I think we may just have a sandwich later. I think we just had... What was our dinner? We had... Right, I think so too, Chris. And then also the thing is, next time, it's say I hadn't fixed the back of this object, but now I changed my mind and turn it around. I'm thinking, well, now I need to go back and fix it. You might as well go do it, especially when the mood strikes. Promo V2. Call it that. Yeah, we had... What did we have? It was it was good. I just forgot what it was. What did we have for lunch? Sausages. Sausages. Like uh, German bratwurst potato sausages. Uh, sorry, um, uh, like pork sausages with potato salad and some peas. It's very, very good. It's like party food. <laughs> it's like good, good party food. I'll go and bring that here. Place embedded... Did I... Where did that go now? Didn't I just save that? Oh, that's a new project renders. Oh, that's not where I wanted to put that. I meant to put that... Into here. So that's promo V2. And I also wanted to kind of make that a PNG. There we go. <laughs> Yes, you gotta love the gotta love the attention to detail and the animations, yes. And then there's just like animations, it just goes like this. You just you just it's not twice the amount of work, it's like twenty times the amount of work. It's literally logarithmic scale that. Place embedded. Promo V2. There it is. So last time I just made it a little larger like so. And this is also where things like Unreal Engine can really help. So this is before and this is after. This framing is slightly different, like I corrected it. I'm thinking, probably zoom in a little, little further even. That's before, this is after. Yeah, I think I like the new framing better. And then with the with the captions would be like this. Hey, I love that. I love these attentions to detail. They're really, really cool. Super exciting. I love it. <laughs> right, yes, pins, IK notes. Those that's 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 the tough stuff. But what can we do? It's just it's just so cool, isn't it? Once once it comes together, it's just it's just so nice. So let me just go and have a look at my at the way the yeah, I think I need to take the ceiling off again. Select this. Go did I did I take the ceiling off? I think so. This from the top here. There, yeah, perfect. So I'm gonna look in 
uh, texture shaded for this just because I, I see the the um, focal plane a little better. That's what I need to... I just need to basically pull focus on this now as it goes from here to there. <laughs> yeah, so this is probably in focus. And by the end, the focal distance just needs to be here. And if we're okay with one interpolated keyframe, that would be great. If not, we're gonna have to pull out all the stops. <laughs> oh, the ceiling, yes, of course. Okay, bring ceiling back. That is in focus. Kind of what we want. 100 frames later. Still in focus. What happens to the people? Are they... Are they suffering? No, they're not. How about here? Oh, we're, we're looking at the stills camera, don't we? Duh! Look at the film camera. <laughs> so, last frame is in vision, in, in, in focus, that's nice. Still in focus. It'll work out. It'll all work out. That's the first frame, look. See any spurious bits and pieces here? I figure, like, so because this is the the widest uh, shot that I hadn't actually uh, looked at, I think this is where I can probably put my my skeleton here or something else on the on the table, so I can fill this up with clutter here and that to a certain extent as well. I think I might I might do that. Oh, and I also need to take this bag away here. That was just the that was just the test bag, wasn't it? So that needs to go. The bunny dreams back that needs to disappear and let's see so the yeah let's put something here on the on the desk and then maybe something here but other than that that's that's gonna be that's gonna work okay So that volcano, I think I know where that is. It's books and volcanoes I'm going to put on here on the table. Well, that looks nice. Maybe a rock as well. <laughs> that volcano that goes on here and stack of books I think that was in the other bundle or in the other product here classroom props A coffee maker a stack of books paper holder Rubik's cube also very important Do we have a stack of books here? I thought we had. We just have one book. Two books. I'll put two books in. Well, just just the one, and then make it a stack. Uh, that'll be that'll be enough. Where is the skeleton that I saw there? I'm pretty sure I saw somebody. This is him. Skeleton model. Perfect. He goes here somewhere. Nice.
that rock. Maybe we don't need the rock. Forget the rock. The book. That'll be turned into a little stack here. And then, of course, the Rubik's Cube, too. Very important to have that on your desk. Oh, did I put it that far away? Rubik's Cube, perfect. <laughs> hey, Mr. Rod, how's it going? Do you know what? This is this is magic. I was literally just this second thinking of you uh, when I'm putting finishing touches and details together. I was thinking, hey, Rod does this all the time. Rod has the patience of a, the patience of an angel. <laughs> Very good to see you. Join the fun as I put the finishing touches on my little masterclass animation. How you been? You've been terrible, I know that, but <laughs> it's just what you say. It's just what you say. Renderosity's Artist of the Year, everyone. Mr. Rod Shelley! Give the man a big round of applause. And have a look at his Renderosity page. A relative of Ross has just died, so... My condolences, Rod. Glad you're back. I had kind of assumed you'd be out of commission for a while, so um, it's wonderful to see you. Wonderful to see you. There, stack of books. If we're ever going to see it or not, not the point. <laughs> I know it's there. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Stack of books. Should I maybe turn them all around? I think we'll be, I think we'll be okay. And then this guy here, Skeleton, he's going to be against the wall over here, I was thinking. Yeah, like so maybe instead of the instead of the fire extinguisher forget the fire extinguisher that was just an initial idea skeleton i like to make him a little larger as well and intimidating and also turn the guy around A little bit like moving away from the wall. Turn him like so, as if he's the guy who's teaching the class. Or maybe not. It's <laughs> there. Goody. Quick, save the scene, Jay. I'm still umming and ahhing about the when we go to this point here. It's it looks okay, but there's something I'd like to improve. So one of those things. I it's I think who said this about 
about their albums, about the music albums, it, they, there never comes a point where you're finished with an album, you just stop working on it. And this is a bit like what I feel as well. It's This is never going to be finished. I'll just eventually, I'll just stop working on it. And then, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be kind of done with it. <laughs> Let's watch it a few times and see if we, if we're okay with this. Joe, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. It is hard, right? Yes, yes, yes. I can imagine. It's been it's been really nice to uh, to feel connected through Rod's posts on Renderosity. I felt um, I felt that was really nice too that you guys kept us updated with what was happening. And I felt the decline was was happening just so very fast. That was that was extremely quick. I, I felt from he's kind of you know he's he's ill but he's hanging in there. He's been ill for a while and then all of a sudden it just went went rapidly down. So I felt I felt very nice that um, that you guys shared that. Many people don't uh, with grief. It's a very very private matter and I'm I'm really glad that you guys shared it. Obsessively over obsessing over details, yes, Rod. That's that's just us in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> One of those things. No, I understand, Joe. I totally understand. Super nice that you drop by. Super nice to say hello. It's 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 nice. Yeah, so I'm thinking just when it gets to here, I feel like we can help this out a little. Maybe it's happening a little too fast, the zooming in, but I also like lingering on the people. I might just make this a little smoother here, this whole where this where this happens. That here, from here to there. I might just make that a little a little smoother. And it's essentially the perspective, isn't it, that let me just drag that over here to maybe frame 150. Maybe that just that's just that extra little bit that I'm I feel like it, it could do with. Yeah, that's smoother. And now I just need that one additional correction frame here. As we already have a one on the film camera, which is this here. Now I just need another one. At this point here, we just need to be a little bit higher. So that's under general transform and then a bit of a bit of Y translation. I think that might just be that might just be what the doctor ordered. We, that needs to be linear probably as well. Otherwise it just goes wobbles up and down. It might also work. Let's see. Yeah, let me try that linear. That. Ka-ding! And I won't be long, uh, Rod. I'll be I'll be gone in a minute. Yeah, there we go. Linear is what what the doctor ordered. And then we're at the master class. Perfect. Okay. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's always something to to do. But I think I'm I'm okay with this. I'm gonna go render this out and share it with you. Is it? I see. I'm still. I'm still thinking. This just isn't quite that enough. <laughs> Maybe that's what it what it needed. I'm gonna go render this out in iRay, and then I will share it with you all. Perfect. <laughs> and then we'll see how it comes out. <laughs> Not bad, right? Rod, I started this on Sunday in a three-hour session to put all these little guys together. So this was the science set here. And I've removed most of these things, shifted things around so that I had a still, which looks like this. And uh, that's supposed to be the thumbnail for my DAS Masterclass series. So this is what the final thing is going to look like with the background a little bit darker. And then we're going to have these straps on here, like per video. There's 50, 56 videos in total. Portal. And that's what it'll that's what it'll look like for each uh, part. So each part has different colors here, and 
I thought for a trailer to introduce the series, I'm going to have that little animation. And uh, so I kind of thought animation uh, while I made it. And yeah, that's that's what we've been doing since Sunday. And then today was kind of the finishing, finishing touches type part. So one of those things. Thinking gets you into trouble. Yes, I, I know the feeling. I'm going to go and save this and render it out. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. I'm going to go be back uh, next Saturday in the morning for probably a little game stream and hopefully on Saturday afternoon for a funky little Daz Plus stream with Mr. Chris, which would be awesome. So, Chris, I'm going to go and shoot you a message with kind of the, the plans that I have. And yes, let's buy that substance integration thing and we'll see what happens, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. If I'm up for it, I'll let you know. I'll be back on Twitch in the afternoon. If not, then, you know, I'll, I'll be back on Saturday. Have have a wonderful rest of the week. Rod, Joel, hang in there, my friends, and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>